Hello and welcome to Deep Green Productions. Today we're talking with the editor of the Hat Trick Letter, Jim Willie. You can find that on thegoldenjackass.com, one of the best websites available on the internet today. Hello, Jim. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure being on. Uh, first time here, and uh, I think we've got some interesting little topics here to discuss, Deck, and uh, it's going to be fun. I think so. I'm looking forward to it. A couple of items popped up on the Eurozone radar recently. The first was the conflict in the Ukraine, and then the U.S. imposed sanctions on Russia. Given the level of heat, do you think the Eurozone will survive? I think it will not. There's already a tremendous amount of strain. Um, I mean, you can start with the Russian gas prom, and that's all well and good. It's a disaster. Uh, Europe is going to work around that. Putin, for example, has managed to pretty much cancel out the route of, of gas from the South Stream, and now he's got an alternative route through Turkey. And that's now called Turkish Stream, and the Turks are all ready for it. They've signed up, and they're, they're managing now to provide contracts for the Greeks for the Greeks and Greece is going to be ready where they have the specifications for volume and pretty much everything they need so it, it's going to be a boon for Greece they're going to see some new income and I, I think we're going to see strategic losses one after the other but the pushback from the damaged nations is going to be significant. The pushback is going to involve attempts to weaken the sanctions by several countries, and it's already started. I, I had a, a list of about five or six. It's, it's Austria and several others. They don't want them anymore, but they tend to come from Eastern Europe uh, and, and the, the fringe of Western Europe, like Austria. I think Germany is going to be pivotal but the political pressure is going to be intense. It's going to go like this. We don't want your stinking sanctions. We don't want the damage to our economy. We don't want the loss of jobs. We don't want the wrecked economy. We don't want all this damage. Let's get rid of these stupid sanctions that really just serve the Americans. And we're seeing corruption all over the place regarding everything that the United States is involved in, whether it's bonds, or whether it's contaminated vaccines, or whether it's fracking for oil, or whether it's Monsanto seeds, or whether it's stolen IMF aid to Kiev itself. So we have a, a lot of controversy. And there's a, a wrinkle that I'd like to point out that I don't think Americans are very aware of, and I'm not really sure that many foreigners are aware of, it has nothing to do with the EU commissioners, but they're not elected. So when you're talking about the French prime minister or president, the Italian prime minister, the Spanish prime minister, they report to the EU commissioner. Now something unusual has happened that's gone one step even further. And that is that the, the NATO supreme commander is almost in a position of control due to martial law. The presidents and prime ministers are really answering to the NATO supreme commander. And there's been a shift. A new commander is in charge. And, and I don't have all the details, but I do have an understanding that the U.S. and the EU Commission is trying to change the structure politically of Europe to facilitate the fascist dictatorship or, you know, totalitarian state. The industrial leaders, I call them the captains of industry and the executives, they're pushing to stop this Russian sanction. They're, they're, they're making progress, but they're having to deal with the constant state of war that suits the political agenda for this fascist dictatorship. The parliaments are going to be key. Watch the parliaments come up one by one and say, 
we're not going to support these sanctions anymore. They have an expiration that's coming up, I believe, in and I, I'm not sure about this. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to get corrected, though. I think it's coming up in, in something like June or August. It's not, it's not indefinite. There are a few more months left, and then the sanctions must be voted upon and renewed. Now, here's, I think, going to be a breaking point. And it's, it's going to be as exciting to watch as it will be tragic. There's a break point coming, Deck. And I think it's going to be a consequence of, of Russia doing their ban against all the EU states for food. You know, the food, vegetable fruits, and livestock and meats and all that. They're about to work a deal with Greece to remove the food ban. And that's going to start a lot of different things. Because Greece, in my opinion, is the model. But here's the breaking point. All these nations in the South, in particular Italy, Spain, Portugal, and France, they are going to have to deal with something really ugly soon, and that is wreckage of their large agricultural businesses. Italy is unique in that it has 14,000 farms. Spain has a lot of large businesses. The Chinese are going to come in and start buying them. And they've let it be known through the past patterns that after they buy a farm, and we're seeing this in all kinds, like numerous, dozens and dozens of U.S.-based farms, they move one-third of the output and direct it to China. So the, the EU sanctions against Russia will eventually result in Chinese buying southern European farms the agribusinesses, and it will result in food shortages in Europe. And that is when I think, game over, they're going to just halt this, and you're going to see violence against the U.S. direction on sanctions on Ru against Russia, and you're going to see violence against the EU Commission, and you're going to see violence to break away from the European Union. That's what I think is coming. And watch Greece. It's not just an example of, of debt handling, debt management, like forgiveness or debt default. Watch Greece because they're going to bust the, uh, the sanctions and be a beneficiary of exports to Russia. Russia's going to lift the ban. And, and oh, it's going to be very interesting. Very interesting. And Greece is strategic because it controls the Bosporus Straits, which Russia requires for their navy to access the open ocean from the Black Sea. So it, it's not just a matter of toll taking. Uh, it's going to be a matter of Russian naval bases in Greece. Oh, okay. Um, now, you mentioned violence against the sanctions. Is that violence from the European states? to uh, cancel the sanctions? Yes, yes, directly, yeah. We don't want your sinking sanctions. They serve the U.S. and they don't serve Europe. That's going to be the, the violent message on the placards. Why are you America's lackey? That's going to be the message on the placards. And it's going to be interesting to see whether the police beat the heads in Europe. They had a very big series of demonstrations, Deck, last week, all across Europe in, I think, 40 cities against the U.S.-led uh, Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, the trade union, and against the Canadian uh, trade union. Uh, I think what we're seeing is the backlash. The U.S. directed the war in Ukraine. The U.S. directed the sanctions against Russia. And the backlash is that the European people don't want the U.S.-led trade union. Because it, it is. It's like, it's like the, the, the Gestapo manifesto taking control of the economies on behalf of the corporations. It has to do with patents has to do with internet control, has to do with conflict resolution, has to do with Monsanto foods, has to do with food labeling. The people don't want it. 
are they strong enough to overcome? It depends on whether a faction within the European political structure will permit it. They may say to the police, don't beat their heads. Let the demonstration take place. Let our parliament hear the people. The question is whether the elite in Europe will allow the parliament to hear the people and vote against the Russian sanctions. Wouldn't it be interesting, for example, if Italy and Spain both vote against the Russian sanctions for continuation? Then what? We're going to see, like we saw in Bremen, Germany, an exploded chemical factory. So this is what this is how the U.S. operates. We have agents in there, and we foment violence. By we, I mean the United States, because I'm a U.S. citizen, and I'm not happy about what my leadership is doing. They don't follow the popular directives or desires. So it's going to get very ugly real soon, and I think either the debt, the debt resolution in Greece, which, by the way, will be copied in all the other southern European nations. J just for instance, uh, as an aside, Greece is 11 million. Italy and Spain is 110. So just simple numbers. Whatever effect Greece has for debt resolution, Italy and Spain are ten, have ten times larger. And stronger? It's, it's, it's either going to be over food or over sanctions or over debt. One of those three. I think it's going to fracture Europe, but the big crowbar, if, if any one nation holds it, rather than, say, all of Southern Europe, it's Germany. I'm adamant that Germany is going to I uh, demand that the sanctions end. It, it might not be known by your listeners, but there are between three and 5,000 German companies that do business in Russia, and they don't want to stop. So they're, they're going to have to lay off people in Germany and reduce the standard of living, reduce the income stream at an aggregate level, and Germany's not going to tolerate it. I'll give you one example about Germany, Deck, that's very telling. In the 1980s and 90s, Germany said, no, we're not going to outsource our industry to Asia and the emerging markets. Instead, we'll work out a trade union agreement at a national level, and they took a 15% pay cut to preserve their, their unions, preserve, preserve their labor market, and they even reduced their pensions. Germany does not betray its own people. And I, I actively, openly wonder if Merkel is going to allow some progress to take place against the Americans, you know, the, the EU, the US, the NATO, and all their, their organizations, by having Merkel resign. You may not know it, but as part of her chancellor position, is a loyalty oath to the U.S. government. I believe there's loyalty to the U.S. over the German people at the chancellery office. So it's going to get very, very weird in Europe. <clears throat> and I don't think they're going to become the New World Order fascist continent, you know, totalitarian grand state. I don't, I don't see it happening. That concludes the first of our series, Jim Willie Bite Size. We hope you enjoyed it, and we are happy to take your comments below. Be sure to check out goldenjackass.com, where you'll find more of Jim's work, both the public offerings and his subscription service can be found there. The next issue of Jim Willie Bite Size should be available in about a week. Hope to see you there. Bye.